Cheers. Hey, what's going on? Today, we're going to be making an Autobot logo out of EVA foam. All right, so today's project's pretty easy. The skill level, I'd say, is anywhere from beginner to advanced. Uh, it's a great way to add detail to any kind of project you got going on, whether it's a Autobot or even a Decepticon. Um, but it's easy. You can even sit around and do it with the family, uh, with the kids. Just cut it out already. You don't want them handling knives. It gets dangerous. Um, but you can have it cut out, and then you can just kind of lay it together and do it as a family. It's easy to do. Um, we're going to be going through some of the techniques I've talked about in my other videos. So please, if you have time, you have time. So go check them out. You know you got time. Uh, but anyways, um, so the tools necessary for this, you're not going to need a whole lot. I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, but today's beer is Hopsmack from Toppling Goliath. It's an IPA, and it's delicious. So if it's in your area, grab some. You won't be, uh, you won't be upset about that. But let's get into the video. All right, this is what we're going to need for this project. Something to mark on a foam with. Something to cut it. Today I'm going to be using my Dremel. If you don't have a Dremel or a rotary tool, um, you can get by with using just some sandpaper or files. You're going to need hot glue gun. I'm also going to be using my wood burner today for a little added detail on a foam. As for the foam itself, I'm using EVA foam. This is floor matting, and it's 3 8 inch thick. And I'm also going to be attaching all this to this adhesive-backed craft foam. It's about 3 millimeters thick, um, just so that I can peel this off and put it basically wherever I would want. And then we're also going to need the template, and I'll go over that here in a second. Okay, for your template, you can use anything you want. It doesn't have to be an Autobot logo or Decepticon logo. I just chose that because I do a lot of Transformer stuff, and it just works for me. Uh, but it's going to be anything you want, any kind of image you can find, uh, two-dimensional that you want to transfer to foam. Uh, the way I got my template was I found the image I wanted on my laptop. Um, I took my graph paper, laid it down over top of that image, traced out everything, uh, and I cut it out. And then basically everywhere there's a connecting point, I poked a hole through it. And I'm going to show you what I did with that in a second. Um, but I just transferred all this also onto a uh, poster board make it a little bit more permanent. The graph paper itself would be fine. It just doesn't last long and it's kind of hard to trace things out. Um, but back to the holes I poked in here. I do that, so I lay this thing down and then I use my Sharpie and I'm gonna go around the outer edge. After that, I'll take my pen and poke through each one of these connecting points anywhere that I think might be a good spot as a reference. And what that leaves me with there's a bunch of poked holes in the foam. Now I'm just going to base connect the dots on this and I will have my template transferred onto the foam. Okay, there we go. Now we have the template onto the foam. We move on and cut this thing out. Um, I do want to caution you on one thing though. If you take your template and use a Sharpie on the outer edge, you're gonna get this thicker line from the Sharpie. Now, if you try to cut it on the outside or the middle, it's not gonna be exact. So when you cut this using your Sharpie, use a clean inside edge. Um, if this is some sort of precision piece, and you say cut it in the middle or on the outside, and things just aren't going to match up. So make sure you're cutting it on the inside line, a clean line. Okay, so that's all cut out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out each one of these pieces individually. I do want to point out, when you're going inside, say, um, a sharp kind of corner like this, I'm going to be cutting this corner out here. Um, you don't just want to cut in here and then cut uh, without 
taking some steps to basically keep yourself from overcutting. Um, so when you're going into a corner, like a 90 degree corner or something like that, take the, the blade, get it to the point where you want to start, bring it straight up and down to 90 degrees and push it straight down through. Um, you can also use this as a sawing motion as well when you're coming up to the end of the next cut. Because if I held my blade like this, I'm going to cut into this and I don't want to do that. So make sure when you do it, you're just holding it straight up and down and using a sawing motion is just fine. Like that. Okay, so it's all rough cut. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some added depth in the eyes and this chin piece. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this and flip this up on its edge and just cut it right in half. Right down the center. Slide that in there. And you can see when it's all put together it's going to be a different different uh, height than everything else. Gives it some nice depth. Okay, and this chin piece, I think I'm going to do this at a bit of an angle. See what I'm doing here is just cutting it right down. I got that chin piece. There we go. And we got that depth. Looks pretty good. Now we're going to move on and soften up these edges on each one of these. Because as you can see, um, when you cut these things with a knife, it actually has like a sharp looking edge. When you soften it up, it just kind of gives it a worn look and makes it look a little bit more natural and not as manufactured. So I, I like to do that on every piece of foam that I work. Um, back to what I said, if you don't have a rotary tool, sandpaper works great. You're just going to take it right on this edge. Just rough it up. Just get that sharp edge gone and round it a little bit. If you don't have sandpaper, you have a file, same thing. Round that edge, just soften up a little bit. Gives a nice finished appearance. But I like to speed things up, so I'll be doing all this with the Dremel. Always remember though, safety first. Okay, so you can see what that did, softening up the edges, it made it so it looks like it's a little bit more of like a, almost like a transformer piece, I guess it could come apart and go back together. But it gives it a little bit of a nice little gap in there, so it just looks a little bit more natural and not as manufactured as it would have just been with a knife. All right, so next thing I gotta do, I have to add the details with my wood burner here and here. Okay, if you have a steady hand, you can just go ahead and do it. If you don't have a steady hand, what I like to do is I'll just grab this piece of aluminum I have and I can just run my wood burner right along that, give you a nice clean edge. Uh, but since these are little small pieces, I'm just gonna freehand it.
Okay, that's all done. Now what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna transfer everything onto my adhesive backed foam. I'm just gonna be using my hot glue gun, gluing it back and sticking it down. And that is it now if I'm gonna paint this thing which I'm not gonna to cover today but I do have other videos on painting so check those out um, I would just give this quick heat seal with my heat gun just go over it real fast um, hit it with some plastic dip first as my base coat or you can use a PVA glue such as Mod Podge or um, just a glue and then after that I'll probably go like a silver on this thing and then grab my black acrylic paint and then go in at each one of these little cracks into the corners and uh, basically wipe it all out and give it an old weathered look. But that's it. This is a real easy project. And uh, this also is a great way to get detail on your foam projects. <laughs> yeah, you like that sound wave? Yeah, you wish. Hey, hopefully you guys like this video. Uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. You can always catch my current projects on Instagram at BMBids, or you can check me out on Facebook at BNB Cosplay. Until next time, be safe. Cheers.